Hello! I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today we are going to learn how to properly mark a demo lens so that we can set the fitting cross of a progressive lens in the proper place so everything works like it should. Marking for the placement of a progressive fitting height using the tick method. And I am sure that you have never heard of this method before because, well, I pretty much just made it up. It is almost the exact same process as taking an OC height, which I think we did two weeks ago, or doing a manual PD, if you will. But there's some subtle differences because for the progressive fitting height, wow, we've got to be really accurate. We are going to hit the bench and we're going to mark, look, choose, and tick. Or we're going to mark, look, decide whether we need to adjust up or down, and only then take the glasses back from our customer. Keeping in mind that we are always looking for the Magic 18. There is the video about that, probably one of the most important videos that we ever have done. 17, okay, 16, okay, 19, okay, 20, okay, Magic 18. Watch the other video, not the place to go into all the reasons behind that. A progressive fitting height is a progressive fitting height. A progressive is not a lined bifocal. You can't move it around. Consumers, if you hear an optician say, oh, we'll just set it high or set it low, they don't know what they're talking about. Okay, a progressive has got to be fit exactly as I'm about to show you. A couple little tiny exceptions that we'll talk about. For getting a progressive fitting height, it is either an electronic measuring device, the preferred method today, most accurate possible, or the dot method. Any other attempt at trying to mark for a progressive fitting height, holding up a PD stick or some pen light thing, just run the other way. If someone's trying to train you that way, smile, nod your head, and do it this way. Kind of like what I talked about with straight tops, there is a great rule of thumb. Of course, there are exceptions. Generally, for a progressive, you are looking for a fitting height between 15 and 25 millimeters, and almost always above half the B. If you do not have those things in a routine job, it is a huge red flag. You're probably a newbie, probably reading the millimeter PD stick the wrong way. You're probably on the wrong side of the five or something. You see that, double check it. You folks that are doing finishing work and with a red flag, you might catch a mistake before you go running an expensive pair of progressives. Think I heard Concy the customer pull up. She'll be in her here in just a moment. So let me show you exactly what it is that I am going to be looking for when I sit down with her. What I am trying to dot is the center of her pupil, exactly as shown. If you are consistently too high, you have three, four remakes with them being too high. Some people will dot the bottom of the pupil as shown rather than the center. That is exactly what you're doing. That is a progressive lens. Those are your paint markings for layout and finishing work. That fitting cross dead center in the center of that pupil. I mentioned that there are kind of sort of exceptions to the fitting high, fitting low piece. You can kind of sort of, it's okay to fit a little bit high in plus powers. If you're right on the edge of 17 and 18, 
Go with 18 if that person is all plus. Beautiful rhyme. Fitting low, well, that's just a no. There is no reason you would ever deliberately choose to place the fitting cross lower than where it should be in a progressive. If you are getting into that plus or minus, doesn't matter, high or low, you should be looking at an office progressive design. You're trying to do something that an ordinary progressive lens can't do, and it ain't gonna work. There are some other methods to get yourself in a position to put a dot on a frame or a lens. We will cover those um, sunglass, seg gauges, tape, that kind of stuff in a week or so. It's coming, so don't send me an email quite yet. Back to that video again. Fitting height, minimum fitting height, corridor, corridor length, progression length. Those are all terminology of progressive design. They are not the same thing. Watch the other video. Turns out that I was wrong. That was not Concy, the customer arriving. That was the mail. So I've got a moment to do just a little bit of housekeeping here. A couple of weeks ago, we did the video on taking PDs and there was a little feedback on social media about the different kinds of pupillometers and sometimes the errors that can occur when using them. Look, um, you're going to use what you are provided with where you work. There are all different kinds of pupillometers. You may work for Dave's Discount Lenses where they have 50 stores and they bought 50 of them direct from China. That's what you're going to use because that's what you're provided with. If you've been working someplace that has an electronic measuring device and you switch jobs and you say, hey, where's the EMD? And they hand you a marker. Well, then you better learn how to use a marker, which is exactly what we're about to do. Basically, what we're going to do here is what we did a couple of weeks ago when we took an OC height. And in some ways, the accuracy of what we're about to do is much, much more important. But in some ways, the steps that we're going to take to do it are going to seem a little, well, maybe less thorough, which is kind of weird. And we'll think it through that. If you pop those glasses off for me, and we're going to put this pair on, your new one. When we are taking our fitting height for our progressive, we are going to do our pre-adjust just like we did for the OC heights and the straight tops. But in this case, I'm going to make sure it's not rotting up on her temples, on her ears. I need those nose pads in the as-worn position. This is the case where I'm actually going to work with her a little bit. If one of them doesn't look right, if it looks like it's sitting down or up, I don't want that neutral position that we talked about with the straight top. Here, they need to be in the right place. Because if I move them after the fact, that progressive is going to move within the frame. She's not going to be able to see the way she should. So I've got my pre-adjust done. She's good and level. Nose pads are in a good place. I'm going to tell her how to hold her head. And I kind of, I guess some ways I kind of feel bad. I kind of feel like I kind of glossed over this a little bit when we were doing it for OC height. So let's talk a little bit more about that. If you are a newbie, if you are not comfortable telling people what to do, this is something you might need to work at a little bit. You might need to work at it with your friends and family at home or certainly with your coworkers. Listen to what they say. When I am working with her and I need her to move her head and be in a certain place, I need to tell her, could you lift your chin up a little bit for me? Could you move your head just a little good down? Okay, she doesn't have to do this, but this, okay, rehearse this, all right? Chin up for me, chin up a little bit, good, chin down, a little this way, a little that way. All right, guys, you get it? Okay, make, you know, do it. If she's doing, you know, this thing, say, hey, just kind of shake your head out for me. Good, just looking at me, chin up just a tiny bit. Perfect, that is what I'm looking for. We talked a whole lot about how important it was that we're level and we're on the same plane and I've got the chair that moves and I'm being careful with holding my arm a certain way and looking. That really is important stuff. But after you have done a progressive fitting height this way, manually, if you will, 
50 times, 100 times, it becomes kind of like what I talk about with you a lot, visualization. This should almost become more of a feeling for you than a process or uh, I guess that would be the word for it. When I do this in a second and I come in and I dot and I dot and I look, I'm going to know if I got it right after I've done it enough times. You'll get a feeling for this. Just practice it. I'm going to go in, I'm going to put my mark, and this is where we're going to talk about the tick. All right. I'm going to come in. It's looking right straight at me. Good. I am dotting her pupil center. I am dotting her pupil center. Now, of course, a whole lot of things could happen right now. I could have them both absolutely perfect. Ooh. And I'd just be completely happy and thrilled with the dots and where they are. I'd say, very good. I take her glasses. I may look at her and I say, um, wow, I really like that right one. This is where my tick comes in. I'm just going to do this. So I remember once I take the glasses off and we do something else or I get distracted, which one of those I wanted to capture. The other thing that can happen is, say, looking at me, and this is another thing we need to talk about, the importance of really looking at her. Okay? I'm not someone given to real heavy eye contact. It's not a thing I do. But this, I've got to look. And, and folks, again, rehearse this. If you're not comfortable with this, you're not used to it, and I'm not looking at her. I'm not looking at the glasses. I'm not thinking, oh, those are so pretty. Okay. I am looking at my dot. I am looking at the center of her pupil. And I am seeing if where I marked is where I want. The other possibility is like say, wow, they're both beautiful, perfect, level, but they're both low. Okay. Then I can simply record that in my head. Say, all right, that looks good. Thank you. Take them from her take out my PD stick, measure down, and let's say I got 24. I set my head, they were both low. I'm gonna go 20, eh, 25 looks pretty good, 26, whatever it might be in my head, rather than doing this and back on and going, oh no, and wiping them off and redotting. Not a great thing to do with your customer, kind of drops that confidence level. Learn how to do this, and again, you can think it in your head and mark. Now, when do we do different heights? My rule of thumb is if I can look at my customer and I can physically see that one eye is higher or lower than the other, that is when I would use different heights. If you have an electronic measuring device of some kind and it captures it and it's more than a millimeter difference, generally people will use different heights. Two is probably not a bad rule of thumb either. Once you get into two or three, then you use different heights for each eye. Last piece of this, I have my customer and she's wearing them and I dot and I dot. I'm very happy with what I've done. I said, okay, that goes back. Thank you. I'm going to take these and I'm gonna measure and I've got my own glasses on so I can see what I'm doing and I get 15. Uh oh, I, you've watched the other video by now, I hope. If not, there it is for the fourth time, I think, in this video. Super crazy important one to watch. I am looking for that magic 18. Are there lenses made for 15? Well, kind of, yes. Um, not the place to go into that stuff. You are looking for the Magic 18. If you do not have 18, 19, 20, you have got to learn to say to your customer, wow, I, I'm sorry, it's just not going to work in this frame. It, you, there's no magic pixie dust, folks. All right? There's no lens out there in the world that's going to work at a Magic 11 fitting height in a progressive. You're gonna have a costly remake, you're gonna have an unhappy customer, possible loss of literally thousands of dollars over the years when she just starts going somewhere else. Worth repeating again, folks. Yes, 
If she is 40 years old, it's her first pair, she's got a lot of accommodation left. You can throw anything at her and she's going to be happy. Wearing that little tiny frame. Five years down the road, when her ads are 250 and that doesn't work anymore, well, you try explaining to her why. <laughs> Don't set yourself up for failure. So that is the technique for taking a, shall we say, manual fitting height for a progressive. As I just mentioned, using your electronic measuring device, of course, is the preferred technique. Now I know what you meant. I've never, because I didn't know what you're always yeah. going on about 18. Yeah. But that's what, so that's what you mean, because there's just not enough space for, for everything exactly. to work. Exactly. Okay. If you're, well, it's not your, your head. Think of yeah, your, no, your it's eye, your, eyes. Yeah. your eye moving yeah, in the lens thing. like just this. It doesn't have enough space. It's just literally not there. Or you're trying to spread, if you're young, your ad's only like one. So you're spreading that one out over, let's say, you know, let's say, okay, let's say, let's say 15 millimeters. Okay. Okay. So you spread that out over that. And that one goes from zero to one okay. roughly in your ad. And as you need to read uh, something up close, you lift your head yeah. and it's pretty gentle because yeah. it's only building in little tiny steps. And you're only on this little bit of one. Now imagine when you take it, go from one to 250, no. a full another diopter and a half of power. And you're squeezing it into this, you know, 15 oh, yeah. or 12 millimeters. You got... Yeah. You can barely move your eyes yeah. or your head and you're going to be jumping up and the page is going to be like oh, this yeah. on you. It's just, it's, it's not a good oh, thing. No, that's not good. No, no. And that's not so many people, I mean, some people are fine with it. It happens. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. But overall, especially like I say, if you're a newbie or something, you don't want to you know, start getting, getting into that stuff if you can avoid it. No. Yeah. All right. So That'd this be is a our... good sidebar. I think we might leave that. Okay. Think. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching us on Facebook, please do give us a like. Watching us on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there in the corner and make certain that every progressive lens in your life comes from Laramie K. I will see you again next week.